Hi everyone, Dr. H and Dr. K here. We are going to do um, palpation for Nape Lane, which is our trail guide number three in our um, spine. We are going to palpate the spinous processes, the transverse processes, and discuss the lamina of um, the cervical spine. So we talked a little bit about just looking at the spinous processes through flexion. One of the ways that you can come into that is uh, when you're palpating is make sure that if you're coming in with your thumb that you're not wrapping your fingers around the front of their neck or even lateral to their neck because that's where their jugular is and you don't want to put any compression on that it would make your patient feel very bad. So for me, I'm going to start, we know our bony landmark is C7, if I want to go C6, and I might have my patient still flex forward so I can see if I'm on that um, spinous process. So I'm at C6, I'm going to try to move up to C5, have her flex forward again, good, so C5, I'm going to move up, C4, see if she's still there, good, move up to C3, yep. Good, move up to C2. And then we know that C1 dives deep and does not have a um, distinct spinous processes that will palpate. We're going to now talk about the um, transverse processes and there's a couple different ways we can talk about it. We know the spinous processes, but in there is really where our paraspinals come up and along there. And we can talk about that as really um, finding our lamina those lamina groove in there in between where your spinous processes and your transverse processes sit. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes a very um, tender point. So a lot of patients because of all the attachments of not only our paraspinals that come up into there but our stabilizers of the neck, all of the muscles that maybe start in, and help a shoulder elevation and movement but also contribute to our neck movement have lots of attachments into there, not just through tendinous attachments, but also through that, that fascial web that runs up and along there. So a lot of patients might come in with unilateral pain that we want, might want to check not only where our spinous processes, our transverse processes, see how those are moving, but check in within that laminal groove to see how it feels at that point. So to check our uh, transverse processes, spinous processes is here. If you kind of drop outside of that dip, and you ask your patient either to do two things if you're not quite sure if you're on the right spot. You can ask your patient to side bend. And so if you side bend, you should feel the same side of side bending actually disappear within your finger or start to kind of pinch on your finger. And then on the opposite side, it should pop out into your finger. So I can have her go to the opposite side to see if I'm, if I'm really on that. If I'm not quite sure if that's not it, I might need to move just a hair either more anterior or more posterior to see where I'm at in relationship to those transverse processes to make sure. So I'm going to have Dr. K side bend one more time. Yep, and this time I feel it disappear on the same side as she's side bending, and I feel it pop out into my opposite thumb on the opposite side. Good. I can also have her rotate. So if I'm not quite sure, I'm going to have her rotate towards me. And as I rotate, I'm going to actually feel more of the transverse processes in the opposite side than I would in the same side. So disappearing on the same side, popping out on the opposite side. Again, I'd have her rotate. I'm trying to compare. Does it feel the same rotating to both sides? Does she have equal motion? Does it pop into my hand equally? Or is there some dysfunction causing impaired movement in between those vertebrae?